Hello students, treatment of cancer primarily includes surgery, radiotherapy, cytotoxic, targeted and hormonal drugs. Now in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of uh, cytotoxic, targeted and hormonal drugs used for treatment of cancer, a complete overview. Now anti-cancer drugs either kill cancer cells or they suppress the growth of cancer. Now as the name suggests cytotoxic, cytotoxic drugs are toxic to the cells. Now these drugs kill cancer cells. Now besides killing cancer cells, these drugs also kill rapidly dividing normal cells of the body and therefore these drugs are highly toxic. Now, their most serious toxic effect is the bone marrow suppression. Now, major categories of uh, cytotoxic drugs are anti-metabolites that interfere with the synthesis of DNA, then alkylating agents that form covalent bonds primarily with the guanine nucleobases of the DNA and this prevents DNA replication and the other template functions of DNA. Then uh, microtubule damaging agents damage the microtubules that are essential for the cell division and thus these drugs inhibit mitosis. Then topoisomerase inhibitors inhibit enzyme topoisomerase causing DNA fragmentation. Then antibiotics, uh, these drugs intercalate between DNA strands. That means they get inserted between DNA base pairs and thus they interfere with DNA replication, transcription and also with the protein synthesis. And then some miscellaneous drugs. Now targeted drugs specifically target and destroy cancer cells with minimal effect on the, uh, on the normal cells. Now, targeted drugs primarily include two categories of drugs, namely small molecule synthetic drugs that uh, enter inside the cells and uh, target proteins like for example tyrosine kinase that is overexpressed in the cancer cells. Then uh, monoclonal antibodies that uh, act on the surface of cancer cells, uh, they bind to specific unique antigens which are expressed on the surface of these cancer cells so that uh, these uh, agents highlight those cancer cells and these cancer cells are then easily identified and uh, destroyed by the immune cells of the body. Then uh, hormonal drugs, uh, these are used to treat cancers that utilize hormones for the growth. Like for example, uh, increased estrogen is a risk factor for breast cancer while increased testosterone is a risk factor for prostate cancer. So drugs that uh, are used in breast cancer, either they reduce the secretion of estrogen or they block the estrogen receptors and are estrogen receptor antagonist. Similarly, drugs that are used to uh, treat prostate cancer either reduce secretion of testosterone or they block the androgen receptors and are androgen receptor antagonist. So now let's uh, discuss in brief pharmacology of uh, each category of uh, cytotoxic, targeted and hormonal drugs. Now first category of uh, cytotoxic drugs are antimetabolites. Now, these drugs interfere with the synthesis of DNA and thus uh, these are S phase specific drugs. These drugs kill the cells in their S phase. Now, antimetabolites are of three types, folate antagonist, purine antagonist and pyrimidine antagonist. Now, as we all know, nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. Now, nucleotides are either purine nucleotides, uh, namely adenine and guanine nucle nucleotides or pyrimidine nucleotides, namely uh, thymine and cytosine nucleotides. Now, as the name suggests, purine antagonists inhibit 
synthesis of purine nucleotides while pyrimidine antagonist inhibit synthesis of pyrimidine nucleotides now besides this thf that is a tetrahydrofolate is essential for the synthesis of purines as well as pyrimidines so a uh, folate antagonist inhibit the regeneration of uh, thf uh, it inhibits the regeneration of tetrahydro uh, folate and thereby uh, these uh, folate antagonist they inhibit de novo synthesis of both uh, pyrimidines and purines so let's first talk about the folate antagonist now methotrexate and pemetrexate are the folate antagonist now pemetrexate is a uh, congener or it is a derivative of methotrexate now uh, let's see to the mechanism of action of uh, uh, methotrexate now during de novo pyrimidine synthesis uh, synthesis of uh, thymidine nucleotide uh, this deoxythymidine monophosphate is synthesized from deoxyuridine monophosphate and for this synthesis of uh, thymidine nucleotide enzyme thymidylate synthase is essential now besides this enzyme thf that is the tetrahydrofolate is also very essential for the conversion of deoxyuridine monophosphate to thymidine nucleotide that is deoxythymidine monophosphate now during this conversion uh, thf that is the tetrahydrofolate is converted to dihydrofolate now once consumed this uh, tetrahydrofolate is again regenerated uh, from dihydrofolate by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase now methotrexate inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase and thus it prevents the regeneration of uh, tetrahydrofolate now de novo purine as well as pyrimidine synthesis stops in the absence of tetrahydrofolate now in addition to this uh, methotrexate also inhibits the enzyme thymidylate synthase so methotrexate inhibits formation of a uh, purine nucleotide as well as uh, pyrimidine nucleotide like uh, uh, shown here uh, it inhibits the synthesis of thymidine nucleotide now second type of uh, anti metabolites are the purine uh, antagonist now six mercaptopurine is a purine antagonist that inhibits de novo synthesis of uh, purine nucleotides then uh, fludarabin fludarabin is another purine uh, antagonist it is a purine analog uh, now since it is a purine analog uh, it itself gets incorporated in the dna and makes the dna non functional now besides this it also inhibits dna polymerase and ribonucleotide reductase thereby inhibiting synthesis of dna then uh, uh, pyrimidine antagonist uh, 5 fluorouracil is a pyrimidine antagonist uh, it also inhibits the synthesis of uh, thymidine nucleotide now we have already studied how deoxyuridine monophosphate is converted to deoxythymidine monophosphate now this 5 fluorouracil it forms complexes with thymidylate synthase and uh, also with tetrahydrofolate thereby it inhibits the synthesis of thymidine nucleotide so uh, all these anti metabolites they uh, they interfere with the synthesis of uh, purine and uh, pyrimidine nucleotides thereby they inhibit the synthesis of dna these are s phase specific drugs and they kill the cells in the s phase now another category of cytotoxic drugs are the alkylating agents now these are classified into six main classes nitrogen mustard that include drugs like mechlorethamide cyclophosphamide 
iphosphamide chlorambucil malfin then ethylenamine uh, in this is the drug thiotepa then alkyl sulfonate the drug is busulfan uh, then nitrosoureas uh, the drugs are carmustine and lomustine then triazine the drugs are uh, dacarbazine and the timozolamide then methyl hydrazine this includes uh, uh, procarbazine now alkylating agents are so named because their structure consists of reactive alkyl group now this alkyl group uh, it forms covalent bonds with the dna primarily with the guanine nucleobases of the dna so look at this figure and these are the two strands of dna now here as you can see uh, this procarbazine procarbazine reacts with the guanine nucleobase present on one dna strand Whereas carmustine, this is called carmustine, it alkylates and it forms covalent bonds with nucleobases present on both the DNA strands. So this produces a cross linkages between the two DNA strands. Now alkylation of DNA, either one strand or both the strands prevent DNA replication and thus this results in the cell death. Now, alkylating agents are non-specific cell cycle inhibitors. That means they can kill cells during any of the phases of cell cycle. Now, another type of cytotoxic drugs are the platinum coordination complexes. The drugs are cisplatin, carboplatin, uh, oxaliplatin. Now, the mechanism of action of these drugs is similar to that of alkylating agents. These drugs also react with the guanine nucleobases and they also cause cross-linking of the DNA. Uh, now, the next category of uh, cytotoxic drugs are microtubule damaging agents. Uh, now, these are M phase specific drugs and they inhibit the process of mitosis. Now, microtubules, as we know, are essential for cell division and microtubules form spindle fibers. Now, polymerization of uh, microtubules causes lengthening of spindle fibers. So, this is the lengthening of spindle fibers. While uh, depolymerization of uh, microtubules, this is the uh, depolymerization of uh, microtubules, this causes shortening of spindle fibers. Now, microtubule damaging agents are of two types, vinca alkaloids and taxanes. Now, vinca alkaloids include drugs like uh, vincristine, vinblastin, vinorelibin, and taxanes include uh, paclitaxel and uh, docetaxel. Now, vinca alkaloids, they depolymerize microtubules. So, vinca alkaloids cause shortening of spindle fibers. Now, as they cause shortening of spindle fibers, they prevent lengthening of spindle fibers. On the other hand, taxanes, they polymerize. They polymerize and thus they cause lengthening of spindle fibers. So, this lengthening of spindle fibers is caused by taxanes. Now, as they cause lengthening of spindle fibers, they prevent shortening of spindle fibers. Now, both lengthening and shortening of spindle fibers is essential for the process of mitosis. So, these drugs stop the process of mitosis in a cell and they kill the cell during the M phase. Now, another category of uh, cytotoxic drugs are the topoisomerase inhibitors. Uh, this is a double-stranded DNA. Uh, now, look at these figures. Now, during the process of DNA replication, when the two DNA strands, they separate uh, and they form the replication fork, uh, there occurs tightening, uh, twisting and overwinding of the DNA segment just in front of the replication fork and this tightening or uh, this twisting is termed as supercoiling. Now enzyme topoisomerase cuts the uh, supercoiled DNA segment. Uh, this removes the strain. So this removes the supercoils. Uh, 
and once the super coils are removed the topoisomerase enzyme reseals the cut segments now topoisomerase 1 cuts one uh, strand of dna while the topoisomerase 2 cuts both the strands of dna now topoisomerase inhibitors do not interfere with the cutting of dna they do not interfere with the cutting of dna but they prevent resealing of the gut cut segments so this results in the fragmentation and degradation of dna and the cell is killed now uh, topotecan and arnotecan are topoisomerase 1 inhibitors whereas etoposite is a topoisomerase 2 inhibitor so uh, this is about topoisomerase inhibitors now another category of uh, cytotoxic drugs are the antibiotics now these antibiotics possess prominent anti-tumor activity and are cell cycle non-specific drugs now antibiotics that are included in this class are uh, actinomycin d also known as uh, dactinomycin then uh, doxorubicin then do uh, donorubicin which is also known as rubidomycin then apirubicin mitoxantron bleomycin mitomycin c now look at these figures uh, this is a normal dna uh, while this is an intercalated uh, this is the intercalated dna strand now uh, these antibiotics uh, these antibiotics they intercalate uh, they intercalate between the dna strands now as you can see here these uh, antibiotics they get inserted between the dna base pairs this is one dna base pair this is another dna base pair so this antibiotic it gets inserted between the dna base pairs and the process is called as intercalation so now because of this intercalation the dna cannot replicate rna and proteins are not synthesized and therefore the cell is killed so this is the mechanism of uh, antibiotics that are used in cancer therapy now uh, next uh, types of uh, or next category of cytotoxic drugs are the miscellaneous drugs now here we are discussing mechanism of action of uh, two drugs now hydroxyurea hydroxyurea inhibits the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase and therefore it prevents the synthesis of deoxyribonucleotides now as we know these deoxyribonucleotides these are the building blocks of dna so hydroxyurea interferes with the synthesis of dna then another drug l asparginase uh, this is given uh, either iv or by the im route now l asparginase is an anti cancer drugs drug that breaks the amino acid l asparginase it breaks the amino acid l asparginase and converts it into l aspartic acid now unlike the healthy cells leukemic cells uh, they cannot synthesize amino acid l asparginase because uh, these leukemic cells they lack the enzyme l asparginase synthase which is required for the synthesis of l asparginase so leukemic cells cannot synthesize this amino acid so on one hand uh, they cannot synthesize this amino acid and on the other side whatever amino acid l asparginase is in the cell that is destroyed by the drug l asparginase therefore uh, these leukemic cells they are deprived of amino acid l asparginase and lack of l asparginase in the leukemic cells causes uh, apoptosis or the uh, programmed cell death so this is in brief on different categories of uh, cytotoxic drugs and their mechanism of action now all these cytotoxic drugs are highly toxic because uh, uh, apart from killing the cancerous cells uh, they also kill the rapidly uh, growing healthy cells of the body so let's discuss the some of the general and specific toxicities of cytotoxic drugs 
Now, first let's uh, study general toxicities of cytotoxic drugs. Now, most serious toxicity is depression of bone marrow. Now, this causes uh, granulocytopenia, agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia, anemia. Now, in addition to this, fall in WBC, RBC and platelet reduces immunity of the body and it increases the risk of infections. Then another general uh, toxic uh, toxicity is the mucositis. Now, cytotoxic drugs, they damage rapidly dividing epithelial cell lining uh, or the mucosa of the oral cavity. So, this results in the inflammation of mucosa, uh, which is known as mucositis. Then, diarrhea and uh, hemorrhage in GIT. Now, damage to the epithelial cells of mucosa of GIT causes diarrhea and hemorrhage. Then, nausea and vomiting is caused due to excessive stimulation of uh, chemoreceptor trigger zone. Now, cisplatin causes excessive nausea and vomiting. Then alopecia. Now, alopecia is another toxicity. Uh, it occurs due to the damage uh, to the cells of hair follicles. Then uh, uh, cytotoxic drugs, they also cause infertility. Then uh, cytotoxic drugs are also teratogenic uh, and they cause fetal abnormalities. They can also cause uh, abortions and uh, uh, fetal deaths. Then uh, hyperuricemia is another toxic effect of uh, uh, cytotoxic drugs. Now increased cell death causes increased uh, break of uh, purine nucleotides and uh, purine nucleotides break to release uric acid. So this causes hyperuricemia. Then secondary malignancies and mutagenicity. Now as cytotoxic drugs interfere with DNA synthesis, they can themselves cause cancer and mutation. Now, alkylating agent procarbazine is known for causing secondary malignancies. So, these are the general toxic effects of cytotoxic drugs. Uh, now, let's study specific toxicities of cytotoxic drugs. Uh, the first toxicity is uh, uh, hemorrhagic uh, cystitis. Now, alkylating agents, uh, cyclophosphamide and its derivative, iphosphamide, uh, these drugs cause bladder toxicity. Now, toxic metabolite, acrolein of uh, cyclophosphamide uh, causes inflammation and bleeding from the lining of urinary bladder, uh, which is termed as hemorrhagic cystitis. Then, uh, antibiotics like uh, doxorubicin and donorubicin these are cardiotoxic and they can cause uh, congestive heart failure then uh, antibiotic bleomycin and uh, alkylating agents chlorambucil busulfan uh, these can uh, the, these drugs can cause pulmonary fibrosis then uh, microtubule damaging agent uh, vincristin uh, paclitex Paclitexel and anti-metabolite 5-fluorouracil can cause peripheral uh, neuropathy. Then as L-asparginase is uh, administered parenterally, it can cause hypersensitivity reaction uh, characterized by urticaria, chills, fever, uh, rashes um, including anaphylaxis. Then uh, cisplatin, carboplatin, uh, both are platinum coordina uh, coordination complexes. These are highly uh, autotoxic, that is toxic to the ear. So, these are the toxic effects, specific toxic effects of a uh, few uh, cytotoxic drugs. So, after the cytotoxic drugs, uh, let's study the uh, pharmacology of uh, targeted drugs. Now, targeted drugs uh, specifically target and destroy the cancer cells with minimal effects on the normal cells. So, as already studied, uh, the targeted therapy include uh, small molecule synthetic drugs and monoclonal antibodies. Now, small molecule uh, synthetic drugs, they enter inside the cell and they target proteins 
like uh, tyrosine kinase. Uh, now look at this, uh, these figures. Now this is uh, the tyrosine kinase. Now tyrosine kinase phosphorylates intracellular proteins and enzymes. Now here substrate is a protein or an enzyme. So tyrosine kinase phosphorylate this substrate. Now phosphorylation of uh, uh, protein by tyrosine kinase initiates a cascade of phosphorylation in a cell and one by one all required enzymes and proteins are phosphorylated and downstream signals are generated that cause cell proliferation. Now overexpression uh, overexpression and overactivity of uh, tyrosine kinase causes excessive cell proliferation. Now imatinib. Imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Now what is drug? Uh, this is a targeted drug. It is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Now this drug it blocks the ATP binding site of the tyrosine kinase. Now phosphate is not available since the ATP does not bind to tyrosine kinase. Now ATP or the phosphate group is not available for the phosphorylation of substrate. So this prevents phosphorylation of proteins. So this is how uh, tyrosine kinase is essential for the phosphorylation and targeted drugs they uh, block the activity of uh, proteins like tyrosine kinase. Now uh, look at this classification of targeted drugs. Now uh, imatinib, nilotinib are tyrosine protein kinase inhibitors. Then EGF receptor that is the epidermal growth factor receptor. Uh, this EGF receptor is a receptor tyrosine kinase. This is a receptor to which enzyme tyrosine kinase is attached. Now jefitinib, erlotinib, uh, these are EGF receptor inhibitor. So these drugs also prevent phosphorylation of intracellular proteins. Then sunitinib is vascular endothelial growth factor tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Uh, it also prevents phosphorylation of proteins. Now sunitinib by uh, inhibiting phosphorylation of proteins, it generates signals for inhibiting the growth of new blood vessels that supply blood to the cancerous tissue. And therefore, as it inhibits the growth of new blood vessels, it is also known as angiogenesis inhibitor. Then bortezomib, it is a proteasome inhibitor and it promotes uh, apoptosis of the cancerous cells. Now next type of uh, targeted drugs are the monoclonal antibodies like uh, rituximab, cetuximab, then bevacizumab. Uh, so now let's uh, uh, discuss the uh, mechanism of action of uh, monoclonal antibodies. Now monoclonal antibodies are identical antibodies uh, that are active against a specific antigen. Now these monoclonal antibodies they are synthesized in the uh, laboratory. Now look at this figure this is a malignant B cell. Now this malignant B cell uh, expresses a CD20, uh, the CD20 uh, receptors on its surface. Now rituximab. Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody. Now rituximab binds to uh, CD20 uh, receptors and uh, as you can see here uh, binding of rituximab to these uh, surface receptors causes highlighting of the malignant B cell and thus this uh, highlighted cancerous B cell is quickly identified by the immune cells of the body. And it is killed by the several mechanisms. Like one of the mechanisms is apoptosis. That is a programmed cell death of this malignant B cell. Then uh, another uh, mechanism by which this uh, B cell is destroyed is the antibody dependent cellular toxicity. That is the ADCC. 
then another mechanism by which this malignant b cell can be killed is the uh, complement dependent cytotoxicity so this is how these monoclonal antibodies they bind to the surface receptor that causes high lightening of the uh, malignant or the cancerous cell and once uh, this malignant cell is highlighted it is easily identified by the immune cells of the body uh, the immune cells they attack this malignant cell and they destroy it now since all the uh, monoclonal antibodies are given by iv infusion so their main adverse effect is the infusion reaction uh, which is characterized by chills fever urticarial rashes pruritus dyspnea hypotension and uh, anaphylactoid reaction can also occur so this is the pharmacology of targeted drugs uh, we have uh, uh, discussed the uh, mechanism of action of uh, small molecule synthetic drugs and monoclonal antibodies in brief so now let's discuss the hormonal therapy that is used in the cancer now hormonal therapy uh, is used for the treatment of those cancers uh, which use hormones to grow like for example breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer now increased uh, estrogen is a risk factor for breast cancer uh, increased estrogen causes excessive proliferation of breast cells that causes breast cancer similarly increased testosterone causes uh, increased growth of prostate cells that causes prostate cancer so hormonal therapy for the breast cancer mm, either suppress or reduce the release of uh, estrogen or it uh, blocks the estrogen receptors on the breast tissue so hormonal drugs for the breast cancer are classified into four main classes the first class is uh, gnrh uh, agonist now these drugs uh, that is a uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist these drugs continuously stimulate the gnrh receptors which are located on the anterior pituitary now continuous stimulation of gnrh receptors causes uh, initially uh, increase in the secretion of uh, estrogen that is the estradiol but persistent continuous stimulation for the long time reduces secretion of lh and further reduces the secretion of estradiol so this reduces overall secretion of uh, estrogen and reduced proliferation of the breast cells now drugs in this category are the luprolide then gozirelin then triptorelin then uh, another class of uh, drugs are the tamoxifen then torimifene now these are selective estrogen receptor modulators that selectively block estrogen receptors on the breast thereby inhibiting the growth of uh, cancerous tissue now these drugs they block estrogen receptors uh, only on the breast they selectively or they specifically block estrogen receptors on the breast now these drugs they Uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators these drugs do not block estrogen receptors on the heart and bones and thus they do not cause uh, cardiotoxicity or osteoporosis then uh, fulvestrant is an estrogen receptor down regulator uh, fulvestrant is an uh, estrogen receptor antagonist and uh, it also causes degradation of uh, estrogen receptors then another category of drugs are the aromatase inhibitors uh, like letrozole then uh, eximastron then anastrozole now these drugs are aromatase inhibitors now these drugs uh, prevent the conversion of androgens to estrogen so in the presence of these uh, aromatase inhibitors uh, androgen androstenedione dione is not converted to estrogen and testosterone is not converted to estradiol so overall this causes reduced secretion of estrogen and therefore reduced uh, stimulation of estrogen receptors on the breast 
So all these drugs, they either by reducing secretion of estrogen or by blocking the estrogen receptor reduces the effect of estrogen on the breast tissue. Thereby, these drugs, these drugs, they they prevent or they inhibit proliferation of uh, breast cancer. So, uh, as these drugs, uh, they reduce the effect of estrogen, they are associated with the general adverse effects like hot flushes, loss of libido, vaginal dryness, osteoporosis and cardiac diseases. So, after breast cancer, let's study the hormonal therapy that is used for the treatment of uh, prostate cancer. Now, aim of uh, hormonal therapy in uh, prostate cancer is to reduce the effect of uh, testosterone on the uh, prostate gland. So, these drugs either inhibit release of uh, testosterone or they block the uh, androgen receptors. Now, uh, four categories of uh, drugs are used uh, for the treatment of uh, prostate cancer. Now, first type of drugs are the GnRH agonist. Uh, now, these drugs, as we have already discussed, initially uh, stimulate the GnRH receptors and uh, increase the release of testosterone. But on continuous persistent stimulation, they cause down regulation and desensitization of uh, GnRH receptors that causes reduced secretion of testosterone. So, GnRH uh, agonist. Uh, reduce the secretion of testosterone. The drugs are uh, drugs like uh, luprolite, then gozirelin. Then another category of drugs are the GnRH antagonists like uh, uh, degarelix. Now degarelix directly block uh, GnRH receptors and thereby it also reduces secretion of testosterone. Then another category of drugs are uh, androgen receptor antagonist, uh, drugs like flutamide, bicalutamide, uh, nilutamide. These drugs block uh, androgen receptors on the prostate gland and therefore they uh, block the effect of testosterone on the prostate. Then another drug is the abiraterone. Abiraterone is a cytochrome 17 alpha hydroxylase inhibitor. Uh, it inhibits synthesis of uh, testosterone uh, by the adrenal gland. So these drugs they reduce the effect of testosterone on the prostate gland and since they reduce the effect of uh, testosterone, uh, they are associated with the general adverse effects like uh, low sexual desire, uh, then erectile dysfunction, shrinkage of uh, testes, uh, shrinkage of penis, then uh, um, osteoporosis, anemia etc. Now, uh, so this is in brief on uh, overview of uh, cytotoxic targeted and uh, hormonal drugs used in the treatment of cancer. Now, to study detailed pharmacology of each class of these anti-cancer drugs, you can refer to my series of videos on anti-cancer drugs part 1 to part 8. Now, please note that the information provided in this video is only for informative purpose. Uh, for use of uh, any of these drugs or, the, or for the treatment of cancer, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.